There we go. We have looked at cubus and cubism as an art movement. I've shown you examples of artwork by Paul Klee and Pablo Picasso for different examples of both portraits and landscapes, cityscapes, and different artwork. What I'm going to show you is a few different ways to create each of those different examples. We are going to start with the Cubis portrait. I'm going to do them with markers and water to create a watercolor effect. So you have control over colors. You can look at value and how that's going to be important for it. What we need to remember about cubism, one, everything is drawn and simplified down to shapes. There's not an extensive amount of detail. The shapes are the focus of it. And color, a lot of times is used not just realistically, but color is used to show emotions, especially in the portraits. So we can go through the same process. I'm working on a smaller piece of paper. We're conserving materials. So if I go ahead and divide it, I can look at it if I'm wanting to do symmetrical, but that is really completely and totally unnecessary considering it's a cubist portrait. So using the colors, they do not have to reflect things that are realistic. Our colors that we are choosing to use are going to be based on emotions or feelings or even just colors that you really like. It's completely unnecessary for you to stick to traditional ideas about portraits. So as we're going through, we still have all of the aspects of our portrait. We're going to include them as we go through. And they're going to be different. So just because we have traditional Placement doesn't necessarily mean that's where they need to stay. Off sizes. <laughs> Detail included. Almost a little cartoonish with some of the details. That is your choice. I definitely want you to have fun with how you are creating your portrait. So that's not even going to fit all the way on the paper. So there, where my red and blue move together because they're water-based, they actually started to blend a little bit. Let's go ahead over there. So this is something you can map it out or you can experiment as you're working on it. 
there's really no right or wrong. It's how you choose to demonstrate. <laughs> I'm adding a thicker side to some of the shapes is going to help as I add the water because it's going to fill in and it will help to blend which is how I'm going to choose to fill in with my color. It's a really cool technique. It's using markers as watercolors. And the longer they sit, the more the colors blend. So while at first, you're not going to see as much of a change, you're going to see a little of the color move. It's actually the longer it sits, the more the colors will show up. <laughs> I'm doing a lot with the triangles today. A triangle kind of day. So from here, we have it filled in. I have all of my necessary elements eyes, nose, mouth, head shape, representational hair, all of that. Now, here's my choice. As I go into fill in, I can fill in each of these shapes using my markers as a watercolor. So water, I'm going to wet the edge to bring those colors in and see how it's not as intense a color as the edges. It's a much softer color. What you do need to be aware of and be careful of is the fact that just like watercolors, the color is going to travel where there is water. So adding water to touching sections will make those colors bleed and fill in. Now where the water goes, the color follows. Some of it will happen right away. Some of it will take a little bit of time and you'll just have to be patient and let it sit. If you want the colors to be more intense, let the water sit on your paper where you've drawn with a marker and then come back and re-wet it and move the color from there, giving it time to move. Now, even just these small spaces that I've done, they are going to look exceptionally different in about 20 or 30 minutes, having just set that little bit of time and allowed the colors to bleed from the marker. To the spaces where there is water. Now I've intentionally been very, very careful 
not to overlap spaces where I've added water and color and that's because I don't want them to bleed together. I want to be able to control where the color is and where it's going to go. So if you are not careful about that, they're gonna go all over and it's going to look more like a blob. But if you do wanna fill in the other spaces, give it time. When you're done and it's all completely and totally dry, you can always go back and move other colors. Just because you didn't do it the first time around doesn't mean you are finished. You can always go back and re-wet areas. What I especially like is even though we have the shapes, is the softer edges that you get once they start to bleed. done for now. I'm going to walk away before I make a complete and total mess. But just because I am done for right now doesn't mean I have to be done with this completely. Remember, being an artist, working on your art means it's a continual work in progress. It's not finished just because you're done working on it right now. So, experiment with the marker watercolors. Go ahead and see what you can come up with and have fun with it.